Okay, this is the P2 paper from June 2022. It's question number three, which is an algebraic methods question. This is a methods of proof. Uh, we've got two things that we're trying to prove. The first one I'm going to try and do by counterexample, and then the second one I'm going to try and do using some sort of geometric arguments. So let's look at part one first of all. It says, show the following statement is false. So quite often I do those using um, counterexample. We've got n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed. And they're saying that this is prime for all natural numbers, all n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Uh, but they want me to prove it's false. So I'm going to be quite systematic. Start off with n equals 1. n equals 1 would lead to 2 cubed minus 1 cubed which is obviously 8 minus 1 is 7, so that is prime. Let's try n equals 2. That would then give me 3 cubed minus 2 cubed, which would be 27 minus 8, and that's 19, which is still prime. This isn't a surprise, so as we're going through, you'd imagine that they're going to test my resilience, and I'm going to need to do this a certain number of times here. So 64 take away 27 for that one. Uh, that gives me 37. No, 37 is a prime number as well, so we just keep going. N equals 4, which is going to give me four cube, sorry, 5 cubed minus 4 cubed. So what's that? 125 take away 64, which gives me 61. No, that is still prime. I'd have thought I'd be beginning to get the number by now. I won't do it too many more times than this. Um, so this is going to be 6 cubed minus 5 cubed, which equals 216 take away 125. Yep, well that's equal to 91. So that's quite interesting then, that first of all, yeah, 91 is prime, so you need to recognise that. So, uh, sorry, 91 is not prime, sorry. 91 is not prime, it's 7 times 13. So they're testing that you do know your prime numbers and also they're testing the resilience and it went quite a long way there. Um, not a surprise to me, I guess. Let's make sure I finish the um, answer off. So um, n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed is not prime for all n contained within a set of natural numbers there. So part two, if we're looking at part two then, what have we got? Given the points A, B and C lie on a circle, um, prove that A, B is a diameter of this circle. Okay, so let's draw it out and let's, when I do my drawing, actually have what I'm trying to prove. So they've said that they want to say that A, B is going to be a diameter, 3 minus 10 and one naught of those two, and C is somewhere else on the circle, and C is seven minus six. So let's just go back and check it again. Given that those three points are on the circle, prove that AB is a diameter of the circle, well, let's say this is a geometric argument. If it is, then that will need to equal 90 degrees. Brilliant, that showed me exactly what I need to do now. If I can prove that ACB is a right angle, then I prove that um, AB has to be a diameter, um, just through the geometric argument, the angle in a semicircle. So we need to prove um, ACB is a right angle. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to work out the gradient of AC. This one, I'm going to work out the gradient of CB, which is this one, and then show that one of them is minus one over the other one. And then we'll, that will be a proof of 90 degrees. So gradient of AC is Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1, or in other words, minus 6 minus 0 
all over 7 minus 1, which is minus 1. If I do that with CB, I get y2 minus 1 over x2 minus x1. That's going to give me minus 10 plus 6 all over 3 minus 7. That gives me minus 4 over minus 4, which gives me 1 here. Now, just because I need to be really quite strict with what I'm saying here, so I'm going to say since the gradient of AB multiplied by the gradient of CB equals minus 1, therefore um, the two lines are perpendicular. need just to write in there, therefore ACB, goodness sake, I've got on my handwriting there, ACB is equal to 90 degrees, therefore AB is a diameter. Now there are other ways that you could have shown it was 90 degrees, you could have worked out the length of this one, the length of this one, the length of this one, and shown that it all fitted in with Pythagoras, but you know, I've just chosen one method to stick to when we're actually doing that one. So proof question, two different styles of proof. Hopefully that makes sense.